This is our home. This is our home. To be with you. To be with you. Father, this is our home.
This is my home to be with you, to be with you. This is my Cause you're a father who knows me by my name You're the God who knows us by our name He's the father who knows you by your name Your home's right here with the living God He's a father who knows you by your name, a God who knows us by our name, and our home's right here with him, our home's right here with the living God. This is my home. This is my home to be with you, to be.
upon a stone A stone so rarely built upon I feel quite foolish in there mm -hmm. And I learned to lead from God's own son A man rejected by his own To the one my future all depends upon. We're trusting you. We are trusting you. We are trusting you, our God. Yeah. I am trusting you, sing I am trusting you. My God, trusting you, 
closed and think about this for a second these two beautiful passages in the scripture I am trusting you I am trusting you my God Jesus I am trusting you I am trusting you my God I am trusting you, I am trusting you, my God. So in the scriptures, there's this beautiful story where we see Jesus on a boat and the wind and the waves are crashing over the boat. And The disciples are terrified, and Jesus, they look at Jesus, and he's asleep. And one day I was, I was reading that passage, and immediately as I'm reading that passage, you know, the disciples get frustrated at Jesus, and they come running to Jesus, and they wake Jesus up, and they say, can't you see that we're going to die here? And, and Jesus wakes from his sleep, and he calms the wind and the waves, and then he looks at them and he has some words for them. And that particular day, the, the minute I got to that part of the passage, I could see sort of the sadness in Jesus as he, as he was discussing his frustration with his disciples. And then immediately I saw this almost perfect parallel passage where we almost have the same exact scenario. It's just flipped. And I saw Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and there were wind and waves that were eternal, and Jesus was now awake, and he comes to his disciples and finds them sleeping, and he wakes up his disciples, and he says, can't you stay awake for an hour? And as I was reading those passages and just visualizing myself in those passages, I just heard Jesus say, I want you to stay awake for what I'm awake for. And I want you to sleep when I'm asleep. A lot of times, you know, like what we think is prophetic or whatever is, is actually, you know, the same stuff that makes people afraid when they watch the news. But to be a prophetic people means that we're awake to what Jesus is awake to, to things that are eternal. And often the things that are eternal are the, the things that put us to sleep. And often the things that we think are prophetic aren't eternal at all. 
and they come and they go. And Jesus says, stay awake. I am trusting you. I am trusting you, my God. You're still there. I am trusting you. I am trusting you, my God. I'm trusting you, Jesus. I'm trusting you. I am trusting you. I am trusting you, my God. Yeah, I'm trusting you. I am trusting you. I am trusting you, my God. I am trusting you, I am trusting you, my God. I am trusting you, I am trusting you, my God. There's a God who sees. There's a God who sees. There's a God who sees right where we are. There's a God who sees. There's a God who sees. There's a God who sees right where we are. His love is strong, it won't let go. He holds us with his sacred heart. There's a God who sees. There's a God who sees. There's a God who sees right where we are. Mm. Mm. There's a God who sees. 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 There's a God
There's a God who sees right where we are. Jesus comes and he shows us this new ladder. And the ladder of Jacob was a ladder that came starting, his story started with a father who couldn't see. Genesis 27 starts with a, a dad who who's going blind. And Jesus comes and reveals a father who not only is not going blind, there are no favorites, 
and he sees where you are. How about this kind of God? How about this kind of God? Every single one of us, all of humanity was meant to leave the garden and we were all meant to return. So if you take that in, there's a God who sees. There's a God who sees. There's a God who sees right away we are. His love is strong, it won't let go. He holds us with his sacred heart. And even when we're far from home, There's a God who sees right where we are. Just take that in. And even when we're far from home. I'm going to say that again. And even when we're far from home. There's a God who sees right where we are. There's a God who sees. There's a God who sees. There's a God who sees right away. We are. Yeah. Just take that in because it changes everything. It changes everything. A lot of us, God is big enough to raise dead people, but he's not big enough to deal with our running or our failure. Do you know when change really happens? When we have enough confidence to let everything fall apart. When God wants to make all things new, we got to let go. The beginning, Jonah didn't jump off the boat. Jonah was thrown in the water. Because the majority of us, we sing our praise, we sing our praise, but the reality is, there's a God who sees. We either worship a blind father. We follow, we live for a blind father with our lives, or we live for a father who sees right where we are. And if we live for a father who sees right where we are, really, not just with our words or not just with our songs, but we really live, it changes everything. Because all of a sudden, competition doesn't matter anymore. All of a sudden, the ability to love your enemy and pray for those that persecute you is possible. Why? Because there's a God who sees right where we are. How can I forgive those that hurt me? Because there's a God who sees. There's a God who sees. There's a God who sees right where we are. How can I let anxiety go and trust? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Will you let it go for a moment and just raise your hands to the Father and say, Father, I believe. Mm. Mm. I believe. Mm. Mm. Sing that with me. There's a God who sees. Sing that. There's a God who sees. There's a God who sees right where we are. Sing it again. 
There's a God who sees. There's a God who sees. There's a God. There's a God who sees right where we are. His love is strong. His love is strong. It won't let go. He holds us. He holds us with. Sacred heart, and even when we're far from home, there's a God who sees. There's a God who sees right where we are. His love is strong. His love is strong. It won't let go. He holds us. With he holds us with his sacred heart and even when and even when we're far from home there's a god who sees there's a god who sees right where we are yeah mm -hmm. See where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom.
If you're tired and you're weary, there is freedom. If you're tired and you're weary, there is freedom. Freedom reigns in this place. Shine. There is freedom. Jesus reigns in this place. Showers of mercy and grace. They are. There is freedom with the Spirit of the Lord. There is freedom with the Spirit of. Turn and face the sun. Yeah, here we go. I'm gonna lift my eyes to Jesus. I'm gonna lift my eyes to you. I'm gonna lift my eyes to Jesus. Yeah. I'm gonna lift my eyes to Jesus. I'm gonna lift my eyes to 
Jesus I'm gonna turn and face the sun I'm gonna turn and face the sun yeah. I'm gonna lift my eyes to Jesus I'm gonna lift my eyes to Jesus I'm gonna lift my eyes to Jesus Jesus, gonna lift my eyes to Jesus. I'm gonna turn and face the sun. There's this story in the eastern part of Germany. There was um, this barbarian, simple barbarian people who found themselves up on the top of the Harz mountain range in the eastern part of Germany. And while they're up there, uh, one day, they looked out on the horizon and they saw a, a large shadow appear. And when they saw that giant shadow appear, they were just simple people and they thought, wow, this must be, this must be God. And so for years, they would journey up with the whole village. They'd take their whole village with them, the children, families up to the top of the mountain and they'd go up there at at sun sunset or sunrise and it took about six hours to get up to the top and they'd wait for the shadow to appear it's a true story and they would they would they'd bow down and worship it sometimes they would see this large shadow riding on the clouds and they'd bow down and worship it and one day they realized Wait a minute. This isn't God. This is This is just a shadow of ourselves. And what they realized that they were doing see is they they you know they didn't have science class or nothing like that. They just realized that they were turning their back to the sun. And the sun was casting an image of themselves on the opposite horizon and it cast this large giant shadow and they thought it was God. And when I heard that story a few years ago by F.W. Borum, I thought, wow, there's, there's a whole lot of shadow worship that goes on. I see it all over the world. We, we end up following images of men calling it God even calling it Jesus. And often what happens is when we, when we realize that that's just a shadow of a man and not really God, not really Jesus calling us to do the things that maybe they called us to, we get disappointed, disillusioned, frustrated, but often what we don't do is we don't turn around and face Jesus the Son because that's just too uncontrollable. And humans, we love campfires more. We like even shadows more because we can control it package it but Jesus is too uncontrollable and often what we do is we just turn and face and look for another shadow and what Jesus does is he says come on turn around and face the sun but it's it's even more crazy than that like we we think we want what's prophetic right but Plato said when all those people in the cave remember the cave story 300 years before Jesus walked the face of the earth after Socrates is killed Plato prophesies this he shows us the cave he shows us the shadows on the wall he shows us the campfire that we love right because it's controllable you can you know a few few buckets of water you see you can just throw it on the campfire and you can put it out but he says that if the perfectly just man actually ever comes and comes and drags us from our fictitious reality and drags us to the light of the sun we'll bind that man we'll beat that man and we'll kill that man and so when Jesus calls us to follow him, he's not calling us to follow our image of him. Like Blaise Pascal said it this way, he said, God made man in his image and then man returned the favor. He's not asking us to follow our image of him. He's asking us to take the hand of Jesus the Son, 
who's alive, resurrected, ruling and reigning right here and right now and follow him. And this life is not a life of knowing where we're going or controlling. It's a life of real freedom and real liberty. But we don't get to know where we're going. We have to trust. I'm going to live my eyes to Jesus. I'm going to live my eyes to Jesus. I'm going to live my eyes. I'm going to live my eyes to Jesus. I'm going to turn and face the sun. Yeah. I'm going to turn and face the sun. I'm going to lift my eyes to Jesus, yeah. I'm going to lift my eyes to Jesus. Say now, I'm going to lift my eyes. I'm going to lift my eyes to Jesus. Going to lift my eyes, yeah. I'm going to lift my eyes to Jesus. Going to lift my eyes to Jesus. I'm going to turn and face the sun. Let the world sing a new song. Let the world sing a new song. Let the world sing a new song. Let the world sing a new song to you.
of a friend to look in the eyes of a friend and forget they were my enemy and forget they were my enemy and see the way and see Courage, Jesus. Oh, 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 give us courage, Jesus. We want to walk with you. Oh, 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 o
the eyes of your imagination and see with the eyes of your heart this Jesus who's alive and resurrected and living right here and right now. And I, what I want you to do is I, I want you to give him your sin. Just give it to him. Sometimes we, we, we will say, forgive me, Jesus, but we don't wait long enough to hear him declare over us, you're forgiven. I forgive you. So I want you to take that thing. For some people, it's something you've never told anybody about. I mean, for Moses, it was murder, guys. Jesus makes all things new and he tells our whole story. He doesn't hide things away. And now I want you to hear the words of Jesus over you. And I want you to receive this. This is what Jesus says to you. I choose to forgive. I choose to forgive. I choose to forgive. I choose to forgive. Mm. Just receive that. Mm. I choose to forgive. Let the world sing a new song. I wrote that after the first, that first shooting at the Virginia College. And this last year, I've just been singing that as a prayer over and over and over again. After every shooting in America, it just keeps happening over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. God, let the world sing a new song. God, let us sow not only peace, but also pardon. God, raise up a generation, a prophetic generation that can let go of anger and rage and frustration and choose to forgive like you did. And like you do. And he declares over you and me today, he declares over you, the God who makes all things new declares over you and me. He says, nothing's going to hold you. Nothing's going to hold you. Nothing's going to hold you back any longer. I choose to forgive. I choose to let it go. Nothing's going to hold you. Nothing's going to hold you. Nothing's going to hold you back any longer. I choose to forgive. I choose to let it go. Nothing's gonna hold you. Nothing's gonna hold you. Nothing's gonna hold you back any longer now. Just declare it out. Declare it out. Declare it out this afternoon. Declare it out. Say, nothing's gonna hold me. Nothing's gonna hold me.
Forget they were my enemy. These are the eternal things that matter, but it's something to receive the forgiveness of God, but we're going to do it, we're going to take it a little bit further this afternoon in our worship, and now I want you to, to literally go and do the same. Some of us come here and we hold anger and frustration and bitterness and rage. Some of us have seen a lot of things, probably things that we were never meant to see. I've seen a lot of things. And I think for years I thought that to forgive, right, was the same as reconciliation, or that I'll forgive somebody when they deserve it, or even maybe when they ask for forgiveness. But we don't forgive because people deserve it. We forgive so we can see again. Don't you want to see again? Don't you want to see again? I want to see again. Every day I wake up, I want to see again. I want to be able to find a river in the middle of a desert. Don't you? Don't you want to find a playground in the middle of a field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want you to take that person that you need to let go and forgive. Right now, close your eyes and take that person right now. Just like Jesus, remember on the cross, he didn't, he didn't wait for us to grovel on the ground and say we're sorry. He just said, Father, forgive them. Mm. Now I want you to take that person in your imagination and I want you to declare over them, I choose sing it, to forgive. Oh, I To forgive, sing it. I choose to forgive, sing it. I choose to forgive. Let's sing it. I choose to forgive. I choose this is the hard stuff. This is the Jesus stuff. This is how principalities are broken. Oh, oh, sing it out. Oh, I choose. This is how families are healed.
forget they were my enemy and forget they were my enemy and see the way that I can be The kingdom come, the will be done, O oh Father, here on earth, just as it is. Thank you. 
find a river in the middle of a desert land. Gonna find a river in the middle of a desert land. Teachers and I pray. Teachers and I pray. Teachers and I pray. Teachers and I pray. Teachers and.
Just say, I want to see what you see. I want to hear what you hear. I'm just going to sing one last song over you as a blessing for your generation and for people that are older and younger here. I was thinking about tonight and uh, a man of God speaking to us and thinking how God's calling a whole generation to not only be a prophetic people, but to build gardens. And I think about myself growing up in the 70s, that's the last thing that we were told to do when we were in church. Build a garden. And when I was growing up in the 70s, the world was going to end. I thought it was going to end at least 30 or 40 times before I was a teenager. But no, nobody told us that we were called to be a people that made all things new. To go out and build a garden to not blow off relationships, to not cut and run. So I wrote, I wrote this song, and I'm gonna sing it over y'all as a blessing, and then I'm, I'm done, so if you're feeling the urge to leave, just don't worry, it'll be done in just a second. Got like five minutes here. Why don't you sit down for a second? Right where you are. So a few years ago, I wrote a song called, yeah, I don't know what it's called. It's, I, I, I never, not the best at the, sometimes the, the, the songs I write, they end up just being whatever the word, the first word is in the song. You know. <laughs> I wrote a song called The Garden Song. I have seen a garden grow, where I was singing that at the end, you know. I've seen a garden grow in a land filled with injustice. And I have heard a mother's cry for her child to live again. And I was just praying to the Lord, I want to build you a garden in a dry and desert land. I'm going to find a river there. I'm going to find a river there. So as I was worshiping it that one day, I just, um, I pictured my wife, Rachel, and I are our four kids. And I pictured, um, you know, just thinking about them growing old and realizing that, especially for those of us that are followers of Jesus, we're not living for something that just started 20 years ago. And we're not living for something that's going to be done 20 years from now. We're living for something that'll be here when we're old. We're living for something that's eternal. And uh, so my prayer for, for you and my kids is. Mm -hmm. Long live the journey and long live the children Long live the memories like leaves the years carried away. Like a tree that slowly grows, the higher we reach, the deeper we go.
Cause we're living for something that'll be here when we're old. We're headed for some place a little further down the road. Redwoods and daisies never look a worry to me. Take what's been given as if there's all they'll ever need. And if that's all they'll ever need, maybe that's all we really need. Death is a doorway and falling's just learning to stand. And less is more than we really need. And empty is a space for us to receive.
So I know you're going to hear a great preacher tonight. Um, uh, it's kind of an understatement, but, but I did want to just leave you with this. There was one thing about that God that sees. I, I almost wish I could have preached that to you today. Because the stories, I, I just, as I was singing that, I wanted to leave you with this. I just turned 39, so I'm not like extremely old, am I? But this is what I have learned so far. The judgments of men, people, they're almost always wrong. And my prayer for you is my prayer for myself for the next 20 years. God, Help me not to be the fool and listen to the judgments of men. But help me hear your voice and listen to your judgments. And this is important because, because if you live the life of the fool, you'll never find the river in a barren land. It's only if you live the life of one who knows the voice of God that you'll go looking for a river in a desert land. You see? And so right now, I just, I just pray for the fear of the Lord and for wisdom. And I pray that you be encouraged in your heart to not listen to the judgments of men, but to learn to hear the difference between the judgments of men which are often just temporary and the judgments of God that are eternal over your life. And I declare over you that you're sons and daughters of a living God and your home is right here with a living God. In Jesus' name, God bless you guys. Can you tell that God is speaking? He spoke a lot of your languages this afternoon, didn't he? How many of you heard from the Lord even in the last two hours of sitting there and listening to this prophet in song? How many of you heard something from God? See, that's a big deal. And you pay attention to what he says. And you honor that. And even this afternoon, go immediately and respond to that. One way to do it is to write down what you heard. Make a big deal out of any move of God. I think it's interesting what he just said, Chosen. Did y'all by any chance pick up on what he just said concerning wisdom and the fear of the Lord? Right the week of this conference, Brian Beasley, right there in the blue shirt. He's got to change to put on black, don't you? No, I'm just kidding. Brian Beasley, a man of God on this, in this ministry leadership, had a dream, and he dreamed that he got a text. And the text was to tell Chosen concerning this conference that they were to study the book of Proverbs. And so we've been discussing that amongst ourselves the last couple of days in Green Room Prayers. About, Lord, what were you saying to us concerning this conference that we were to study the book of Proverbs? We begin to talk about what the book of Proverbs represents. And that's one of the things it represents relationships. It represents the fear of the Lord and wisdom. So I've got a feeling if that word is to us, you're chosen too. So that's another one of your homework assignments. I'm giving out homework assignments today. <laughs> Go study the book of Proverbs. I think God has something to say to us in that. All right? Can you hear that word? Yes. Yes. And how sweet of the Lord today to tell you, wherever you are, he sees you. He has sung over you today. How sweet of the Lord, because so, so many times we love to do all the singing. It was like the other day. But I love it when we can just listen and let Holy Spirit sing over us. We need that, don't we? Now, what we're going to do right now is we're going to give you a break. And what, because the service tonight will go after midnight, because we're going to bring in the new year in the glory. <laughs> 
Yeah. While the world is getting drunk on one thing, we're getting drunk on another. And ours is so much better, it's not even worthy of comparison. It'll be the best party in the whole world. So what I need you to do is um, we're going to give you a little, the service will begin at 8. We're going to make delay a little bit longer because we're going to be here a while. And tonight, there's no ceiling, an open heaven, glory, worship, the word. Now, listen to me. If you want, remember, if you believe that you are chosen to be a part of RSM this coming year, at 715, you'll need to meet us in that room, okay? And everybody else, we will see you. The door is opening probably around 7, am I right? 7 o'clock, the door is open at 7. Service begins at 8. We'll see you in a few moments.